Hey guys, it's Bridgette with San Diego Seed Company and today I want to talk about fertilizer. It is a very complex and, and super interesting part of gardening. It is something that can be very confusing. It is something that can be very confusing. That's a great outtake also for new gardeners, but I am here to help make it a little bit easier. But before I get into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we do a video that you might wanna watch. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, if you are a brand new gardener and you've never gardened before and you just started one probably because of COVID or for whatever reason, one thing that might be very confusing to you still is which fertilizer do you use and when? Well, I don't have a perfect neatly boxed up answer for you. Part of understanding fertilizers is understanding what they're made of, what your plant needs. It's kind of like being a doctor, right? You don't just give a patient anything, right? You gotta know what they're suffering from and then what's gonna, what, what medication might help with that. Fertilizer is very similar, but I am gonna break it down to give you some big picture information about what you might use in different situations. So, number one, this is actually compost tea. So it's not even actually fertilizer. It is compost tea that we use in the garden. And basically what it is, is like giving a probiotic to your plants. So, you know, we take probiotics, maybe it's in the yogurt form, maybe it's in a pill form, but it's basically introducing good bacteria into our bodies that's gonna help make us thrive. Compost does the same thing. Compost tea is basically just water that is extracted from compost that is full and teeming with all the microbiology that, that uh, is in that compost. We love using compost tea, particularly in potted plants. Now, why is that? Well, think about it. You have this little pot and you filled it with soil and the only uh, microbiology that is available to that plant is what's in that pot. And if you filled it with some pretty sterile, boring potting soil, well, the plant may not thrive because it needs lots and lots of microbiology to convert nutrients into bioavailable nutrients, basically nutrients the plants can eat or consume. Now, these are my prized pepper plants. These are aji charapitas, which are one of my favorite peppers from Peru. And we grow them in pots because they are finicky. And peppers and tomatoes and potted plants in particular really benefit from using a compost tea because basically you're giving them a probiotic so that they can really thrive in their soil. Now, this compost tea you can use pretty much on anything, but what it is known for is are, is, is making really big, huge, amazing tomatoes. I learned about this product from our tomato, our local tomato expert and started using it and have never stopped. It is such a great product. Now in your garden, you could actually make compost tea from your own compost, but it's a fairly complicated process. And um, when I am gardening and in the spring, when I've got so many things going on, I just like using a high quality product that I can use and I know that it's good. If you have compost in your garden, make some compost tea and use it in addition to this. There's, you, you can't use too much compost tea, which is really important. And one of the things that makes it a really beneficial product to new gardeners is because you can't, you can't overdo it. You're not gonna burn your plants or waste a bunch of product uh, by, by maybe getting a little too heavy handed when you're pouring it into the watering can or so on. So this is compost tea or compost extract. This is a little bit different than actual fertilizer. Let's move over to actual fertilizer. So this is a liquid, you can hear it, right? A liquid fertilizer. This is a fish fertilizer. Now, we've been using fish fertilizer for over a decade and it is my go-to liquid fertilizer for several different reasons. One, it is not a chemical fertilizer. It comes from grinding up fish that are byproduct of the fishing industry. So these are, are products that need to be used anyways, and great, let's grind it up and let's make it into a kind of stinky fertilizer. The other thing that I like about it is it's very low in its numbers, right? It's, it doesn't have a massive amount of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. It's actually, this is 241. This is our go-to product that we use when we are starting seedlings. And that is because I want something that is not a chemical fertilizer. I want an organic liquid fertilizer that can go into the, the starter pots as soon as they get their first set of true leaves. And it can be absorbed through the soil, 
and through the leaves. That's really important. When you're using a chemical fertilizer, you have to be very careful that it doesn't get too much on the leaves because it actually can burn them and you can easily overdo it. We use this fertilizer every time we water in the spring in our seedling trays. Now we, dil we dilute it by about half and you always, always, always want to read the directions on the back because every brand is different and will tell you what to use. This particular one is going to tell you to use, let's see, one eighth of a cup per gallon. So I would use one sixteenth of a cup per gallon. And basically I'm fertigating. I am irrigating and fertilizing my seedlings at the same time. This is a cool product because it's inexpensive. It's not gonna break the bank. It is a, a, comes from a byproduct of the fishing industry. So you're helping you know, offset some waste or a waste stream, right? By using it in another product. It's organic, it's not gonna burn your plants. The one downside of it is it can be a little stinky. It is ground up fish, right? It's not a pleasant smell. The reason why we carry Neptunes is because out of all the fish fertilizers that we've used over the years, it's the least stinkiest. I'm not gonna say it's not stinky, but it's a far less stinky than some. So you can use this on your seedlings. You can also use it in your potted plants. It's a very easy way to fertilize. And the difference between a liquid and a dry fertilizer is that a liquid fertilizer is going to be water soluble. That means that it's going to uh, dissolve in the water and be available to the plants a lot quicker than the granular fertilizer. So we tend to use these on small young plants that need an instant boost and we save, uh, we save it and don't use it on bigger plants that are already well established. Plants that are well established or if, I'm, if I am uh, creating a new garden bed, we actually use this product out at the farm. If we're turning over a bed, this powder or dry fertilizer gets put into the soil to break down and be available to the plant all season long. Now, the reason why I really like this is because A, it's local. We actually get this out of Arizona, which is fabulous. Um, and it's also made from really cool products. So it's made from feather, feather mill, bone mill, it's got worm castings, it's got crustacean shell, kelp. So it's got tons of different products in it that are going to combine to basically make a really good vitamin, if you, if you wanna think of it that way, for your plants. Dry fertilizer is best used on bigger, mature plants or when you are turning over a bed in the garden or on the farm. Because it's dry and it's an organic fertilizer, it's going to be, it's going to take some time to break down and be available to the plants. So this is like a long-term nutritional plan for the plants, whereas something that is liquid is going to be instantly available uh, to the plants and give it an instant boost. So these are two different products that we use across the farm. We use this on seedlings, on new plants. We use this when we are, are um, turning over a bed or um, maybe transplanting a large perennial or something like that. Last thing we have here is an awesome little product. This is a tomato and vegetable fertilizer that is great for brand new gardeners because there's no guessing involved. You basically fertilize by using one pump all you need to do. And it is very low in its numbers, it's 322. It is not stinky. It is actually my go-to fertilizer for indoor plants. Obviously, I don't wanna use my fish emulsion and make the whole house stink. Um, but you can use it on any of your potted plants, your, your, your patio garden. This is a great fertilizer to use. It is all organic and it's made from a lot of the same things that, that we have here, but they're not stinky, which is really important. So now before we go, let's actually talk about how we use dry fertilizer. So come on over. I think my, my fat rolls are pulling on it. You can put that back in your pocket. Better now? Yeah. Um, I hate to do it, but let's go all the way to the back because I have some prep. No, I totally get it. You Stay up on here. Okay, so let's talk about how to use a granular fertilizer. So granular fertilizer or dry fertilizer is in the powder form, right? And because of that, you have to think about how you're going to apply it that is the most effective. So these are zinnias that we actually planted. Um, we planted these guys last week. And every time I planted one, I would actually dig my hole, which you can tell has been irrigated really nicely. And then I would add in a small amount of granular fertilizer into the hole prior to planting the plant. So let's pretend I had one and I planted it in there. 
The reason why I want you to see that is because organic fertilizer, granular organic fertilizer, works best when it is going to come in contact with the roots of the plants. The roots of the plants are actually going to break them down, make them bioavailable, basically eat those nutrients, right? So you don't want to be wasteful with it. When you're prepping a whole bed area, let's say I'm gonna do rows of lettuce here, or you can see how tightly planted my onions are. I can actually use this granular fertilizer up and down the row when I'm prepping the bed so that every single plant has the fertilizer available to it. In this particular scenario, because I'm giving these a lot of space because it's for seed production, I don't want to waste fertilizer in between the rows necessarily, and I'm going to put them directly below where I planted my plants. That's really important. Granular fertilizer is most practical when you are transplanting something out or turning over a bed. Otherwise, liquid fertilizer is great when the plants are really small or they need an instant boost right at that moment. That's really the two big differences between liquid and granular fertilizer. Okay, so that's just a short broad overview of fertilizers. I could spend hours and hours and hours going on and on about everything that you need to know about fertilizers and how they interact with plants, but that's just basically a fertilizer 101 for beginning gardeners. How do you use it? So one of the number one questions we get all the time is what fertilizer do you buy? What brand? Well, we've tried lots over my decade of growing and we have selected a few very special, high quality, inexpensive fertilizers that we now list on our website that are available to you. These are all products that we've used for years on end to make sure that we like them, they work really well, and they are sustainably sourced, which is really important. So you can shop for those fertilizers and make sure that, um, I forgot what that thought was. It just like floated away. So remember, Fertilizer is only one part of a healthy garden. Your soil in your garden is going to dictate how well your plants grow. So you're gonna need things like microbiology, you're gonna need plenty of moisture, you're gonna need lots of things to make the soil thrive so that your plants can thrive.